In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how we do web service API integration. In other words, how we connect to our web service using an iPhone application. So we're going to cover five outcomes. We're going to look at how we describe a REST API request. We're going to pass data into the head and into the body. We're going to make an asynchronous REST call, so it happens in a separate thread. We're going to look at the JSON data in the response and read it into dictionaries and arrays. And we're going to use a network activity indicator to show that data has been transferred across the web. So let's start by describing the REST API request. We start off by using a special class called an NSURL class. An NSURL object allows you to manipulate URLs and the resources that they reference and it always contains a valid URL string. And this means that any URLs we use in the application are going to be valid, and it allows us to construct URLs in a valid way. So here's a very simple example of how we use an NSURL object. As you can see, we create a string which contains a URL path. We then use the NSURL class method to turn it into an NSURL object. And then we can append extra components using the URL by appending path component method. Once we've got an NSURL, we need to create an NS mutable URL request, which describes the connection between the client and the server. It describes the data that's going to be added to the head and the body. It describes the method we're going to use. And by default, when we create NS mutable URL request, it uses the get method and has no request header or body parameters. The NSURL connection object is how we make the connection to the web service itself. We supply it with an NS mutable URL request object. And the NSURL connection loads this request asynchronously. And what's very important is it has a series of delegate methods to handle the data that's transferred back. So here's a very simple example. We create an NS mutable URL request object with our NS URL object. And then we, init we initialize an NS URL connection object with this request object. And we specify the delegate that's going to handle the re response data. And once we've done that, because it's handled asynchronously, we can simply cancel the connection object. So the next thing we're going to look at is how do we pass the header and body data into our request. And there's three things we need to be able to do. We need to be able to change the HTTP method that's being used. We need to be able to add data to the request head. And we need to be able to add data to the request body. If we create an NS mutable URL request, we can call the HTTP method to change the HTTP method of the request between put, delete, post, and get. If we don't specify the HTTP method, it defaults to get. The next thing we need to be able to do is to pass data into the request head. And if you remember, we need to pass data such as the authorization token, and we also use the request head for content negotiation. So it's a very simple process. There's a special method which allows us to add the value we want for the header field. So in this example, we define our token as a string, and then we add the value for HTTP header field authorization. The final part of the process is to pass data into the request body. And if you remember from your work with APIG or curl, you'll know that the request body contains a URL encoded string of key value pairs. So in this example, let's specify an integer value for the genre of seven and the string computer science for the category. And as you can see, there's an ampersand between the different sets of data and we put a plus sign to replace the space if we have spaces in our values. So here's an example of how we can set the request body. We create an NS number object and we create a category value and then we use NS string string with format to build up our URL encoded string. Once we've done that, we create an NS data object using UTF-8 string encoding, and we pass that as the HTTP body property of our request. 
in the next section, I'm going to be showing you how to make asynchronous API calls using the NS mutable URL request and the NS URL connection objects. To get this to work, we have to use the NS URL connection object and we have to implement its delegate methods. And this allows the request to be carried out on a separate thread. And when we deal with internet resources, it's very important that we put our activities on a different thread, otherwise we're going to lock up the user interface while we wait for the data to be returned from the API. So the first thing we need to do is make sure in our header file we implement the nsurl connection delegate. Once we've done that, there are three important methods. Connection did receive response, which gets fired when the web service starts sending data back. Connection did receive data, which fires as the data arrives. And connection did finish loading, which fires once the data has been received and finished. Normally on did receive response, we need to reset our NS data object, which we're going to store our data in. On did receive data, we're going to keep appending our data to the NS data object. And when we fire did finish loading, we need to do something with the data, which in our case means turning it into an NS mutable dictionary. Now, when the data arrives, the data will be sent in several pieces. And what we need to do is keep appending data to our data object. Capturing the data is done by using an NS mutable data object. Every time we receive a chunk of data, we need to append the data to this object. And the best idea is to create an NS mutable data property privately in our class, synthesize it, and then use that to attach the data. So if you look at these delegate methods, you can see that in the connection did receive response, I'm allocating it in my NS mutable data object, which means it clears out the old content or initializes it. In did receive data, I keep appending data to my data object. I simply use the NS JSON serialization class method, JSON object with data, to convert the NS mutable data object into an NS dictionary. And once I've got it in an NS dictionary, I can do all sorts of things with it. The final thing we're going to talk about is the network activity indicator. You've probably seen these when you use iPhone applications. When something's happening over the network, you get a small indicator rotating in the status bar. It indicates that something's happening over the internet, and we need to turn this on when we start receiving data, and turn it off once all the data's been downloaded. And turning it on and off is very simple. We use the shared application class method for the UI application class. And then we call the property network activity indicator visible. And we simply assign a Boolean yes or no. In this video, we've covered quite a lot of topics. We've described how to, we've shown how to describe a REST API. We've passed data into the head and body and set the HTTP method. We've used that data to make an asynchronous API call. We've read the JSON data from the response. And I've also shown you how to use a network activity indicator in the status bar to tell the user that data has been transferred across the internet.